If you're a Windows user and everything's working fine, consider yourself lucky. But at some point, you're going to see this. For a lot of people, they just wait for it to finish, they click restart, everything works fine. But what happens when your computer can't repair itself and it brings you to this dreaded screen? A lot of people know that this is some type of troubleshooting thing, but they have no idea what it does or how to use it. In today's video, I'm going to go through each of these individual troubleshooting steps for you. I'm going to show you what they do, I'm going to show you how to use them, and hopefully, with this knowledge, you can fix your computer yourself and get back up and running. So hopefully you're not already at a point where you need these steps, but it is going to be a good idea to familiarize yourself with these troubleshooting steps and knowing what these different steps are and how they might fix your computer may be the difference between whether you lose everything you have on your PC or you're back up and running in five minutes. Before we get started, let me say this to all my Linux users out there. I know, use Linux. But what we're focused on today is people who use Windows on a daily basis and don't know anything about fixing their computer. So if you happen to come up to this screen, go ahead and click on Advanced Options. You're going to be presented with a blue screen with a menu that looks just like this. From here, you want to click on Troubleshoot. The next step is to click on Advanced Options. So the option that you're going to choose from this menu really depends on the problem you've been having. So for example, if your computer has been running fine and then out of the blue it goes into this troubleshooting step, what I would first do is go to Startup Settings, choose Safe Mode, and then let the computer restart in Safe Mode and then see if everything works. After that, from Safe Mode, restart your computer and see if it goes into Normal Mode, and if that's the case, you're ready to go. The next big reason your computer may not start properly is because of a recently installed update. Now there are two different kinds. There are quality updates and there are feature updates. Quality updates are the smaller updates like drivers and things like that. Feature updates are mega updates, very, very large. If you're not sure which update you installed that might have caused the problem, I would start with the quality updates and then if necessary, uninstall the feature updates. Follow the directions and restart as required. Another option on the troubleshooting menu is the UEFI firmware updates. Now, this is your system BIOS, which chances are if you didn't do anything to cause a problem, you really don't need to mess with this. This is really for people who need to restart their computer and go make changes into their BIOS as far as secure boot or TPM or changing boot sequence, things like that. Most likely, if you accidentally came across a blue screen, this is not your problem. So I would ignore this step. Now the next option is System Restore. Basically what this is, is every time there is a major change to your computer or sometimes when you install a program, your system will create what's called a restore point. That allows you to return back to that computer state if for some reason something goes wrong. So if you click on System Restore here on the menu, it will restart your computer and bring up the System Restore process at which point you can then choose a previous date, a previous restore point, and restore your computer back to that point. That may very well take care of your problem. Now on the main troubleshooting menu, you're also gonna see advanced recovery options, which allows you to restore from a factory image, but it's not the factory image that you're thinking of where your computer came from the factory. So if you haven't created a system image file, don't worry about this because it's not gonna help you. Now probably my biggest go-to option from the troubleshooting menu is the command prompt. There are so many things you can do from the command prompt, including checking your hard drive, checking your Windows file system, even backing up your personal files. So when you click on command prompt, you're gonna get a black DOS box that looks similar to this. Now there are literally tons of different DOS commands that are available to you, but there are two that are of primary importance if you're having Windows system problems or possibly even hardware problems. The first one is what's called System File Checker. Now, from this DOS box, you can type SFC space forward slash scan now, all one word. And what that does is it actually checks your Windows file system to make sure that everything is correct and that all the files are exactly the way that they're supposed to be. A lot of times if you can't boot into Windows, it's because you have a system file that is damaged or corrupted. This will check and verify and repair that if it's possible. Now the next great DOS command that you have at your fingertips is called check disk. From that same DOS box, type chkdsk space forward slash f. Now what this does is it actually checks the integrity of the Windows file system, not the files themselves. 
Think of it as making sure that all the pages of a book are correctly listed in the table of contents. It goes through and it verifies that the Windows file system is correctly structured, and sometimes that's all it takes to keep your Windows from booting. The next step after running that check disk with the F switch is to run a chk dsk space forward slash R. Now what that does is if you suspect that you might have a problem with your hard drive, that slash R switch not only checks the Windows file system, but also checks the integrity of the physical hard drive that's in your computer. If you think you have a problem with your drive, this is a good way to know for sure because the check disk slash R will tell you if there's a problem. This is a pretty intensive scan and it will take a while, so just be patient. The next option I'm gonna talk about is absolutely probably the most useful, not necessarily the most helpful, but if you don't have your files backed up on your computer, you can plug in a flash drive and change to the drive letter of that flash drive and manually copy files from your user directory directly to that flash drive. Even if you can't get into Windows, you can absolutely back up anything super critical. Now, if you have a ton of files to back up, it is a little more complicated and maybe I'll make a video about how to copy multiple folders and multiple files at one time. Say for example, you've got a, an important document that you've saved in your documents folder that you have to have. You can go copy that file to a flash drive from this DOS box and at least you will have a good copy of it. Now, of course, I recommend you having regular daily backups. If you haven't done so yet, I do have a video up here in the corner that will help guide you into creating very simple backups. I would highly recommend you do this before you have a problem. Now, in the most absolute worst case scenario, when none of these other steps allow you to get back into your computer, you at least have the option to try to do what's called a Windows reset. What this basically does is it replaces all the Windows system files and basically gives you a new operating system. It will give you the option to either keep or delete your existing files, depending on which one is your preference. But this is one option for sure for you to be able to reinstall Windows. Yes, it is an inconvenience. Yes, it's going to take a while, but this is absolutely something you can do yourself to repair your computer. If in fact you start getting these startup repair or automatic repair options, this is an option for you. Now it is true that there is a troubleshooter built into Windows, but you will find that if you continually have a problem, a lot of times the things that you need to do, you will not be able to run as an administrator. So what I would recommend is to go and download a Windows installer disk and keep it on a flash drive because inevitably you will have a problem. You will be thankful that you have this if that time ever comes. Now I'm not going to go into detail about how to do that. You can click that card up here. It gives you a full step-by-step -step guide start to finish on how to go to the Microsoft website, download the software to a flash drive, and then turn around boot to it. So I hope that video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. And also let me know down in the comments if it helped you out a little bit. Thanks so much for watching.